I um, belong to a uh, very small persecuted minority called Mandaeans, our um, followers of John the Baptist. So when I was born in my community, um, the discrimination and persecution was something that I became acquainted and accepted very early and eventually, I guess, um, resulted in my exodus. My name is Dr. Kayvan Abak. Uh, I'm an Iranian Mandan refugee. I feel like discrimination became a part of our lives that we had to accept. A lot of trouble in the education system where we were called all kinds of names and mistreated. And, and as I grew up, given that my own father um, was a teacher at some point and valued education and valued knowledge, um, it resulted in me leaving the country. Uh, but my first impression of Australia, um, dry. <laughs> um, I remember in detention centre, in Woomera in particular, it, the first time that I really laid eyes on anything specific was just bread dirt, as far as I could see. There wasn't much to do in the uh, detention centre. I mean, you wake up and you're detained and you go to bed and you're still detained. <laughs> There was no access to newspapers, no access to schooling per se. Missed my parents, missed my family. There was um, a huge sense of loss of identity, you know. Um, looking around, I found these um, stones, they were everywhere. When they had decided to smooth one of them on the concrete. So I grabbed a stone and it was a decent size. It's cracked it open and started smoothing both of them. I still remember one of them splits because I, was, I wasn't being gentle enough, I think. But the other one survived the smoothing process. And so I looked around and there were um, plenty of barbed wires, lots of razor wires, like nails. And so what I did was um, I just came up with a draw on the stones and I started carving around them. Talk about um, despair and loneliness, and the two kind of interlink because when I decided to smooth the stones, I didn't have a clear picture of what this stone going to look like. But what I knew in my head, in my heart, that I had missed my family, that I had missed my parents, my extended family. And so it wasn't surprising when I started drawing on it um, that I drew. Uh, and I wrote the, the, the words my, you know, of my father, my mother, and the initial of my grandmother. Um, it was the flower kind of represented what I really wanted to give my grandmother uh, in that particular time to show her I've missed her. And um, the hearts was very much representing how much I had missed my parents as a minor. And um, when I came out eventually, um, it was no surprise to me, but you know, I held them very dear to me to a point that when I left Umrah, I had relinquished every single memory, at least physical and uh, a physical memory. And I got rid of all the objects except these two. Um, even when I came out of the detention center, I was placed under, um, what's the best way to describe it? It was like a house arrest. <laughs> and because I was a minor, I wasn't allowed to go anywhere. I was placed in a house and there's people you know, kind of being caregivers and, so that kind of continued um, exposing my anger and that's why I started boxing. And now with, my, with having the opportunity to work with young people, um, I, I like to make that much of a bit of a difference. No, I have not been back home uh, since I left, but my family had since also became refugees and they have settled in the uh, USA. To this day, to my parents talk about it, how painful it was for them to uh, let go of their 13-year-old son. It happened really, really quick when it happened. When you're an asylum seeker, there isn't planning, if that makes sense. You, know, you have a, a journey of migration, you have a journey of being a refugee, and you have a journey of being an asylum seeker. Often when we talk about it, um, I think it comes to the whole idea of survival and also investing in one's future.